Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can deploy a static website to Amazon S3 with S3 website. But before we do that, let's just take a look at what S3 website really is. S3 website is a CLI tool that allows you to deploy static websites to Amazon S3 and it handles a bunch of features automatically for you. It can set cache control, it can enable gzip compression and it has built-in CloudFront support. So why would you use this tool? Well, it's very convenient. There's just one command you have to use to deploy your website and there are no manual actions required after you've set it up. So what's next in this tutorial? Well, first of all, I'm gonna show you how you can install S3 website. We're gonna create a sample config file. We're gonna check out the various configurations options and then we're gonna deploy a simple website to S3 to show you how this all works. So let's begin. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to install S3 website. Now S3 website is a Ruby gem and since I'm using OS X, Ruby is pre-installed so I don't have to do anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and type sudo gem install S3 website and I'm going to type in my password. And this will take care of downloading and unpacking and installing all the necessary resources for me. Okay, so the tool is installed and we can go ahead with creating our very first website. So I'm gonna to go to my desktop here and I'm gonna create a directory. I'm gonna call it my awesome website. And I'm gonna go into that directory. And S3 website actually has a built-in command to create a sample project. And that's S3 underscore website. And then it's config create. And this will actually create a sample configuration file which you can then edit. So let's take a look at what's in that file. So I'm gonna to go to Finder, I'm gonna to go to my desktop here, and my awesome website, and I'm gonna open the S3 website configuration file. And basically it only needs three things from you. It needs your AWS S3 access key, it needs your secret key, and then it needs just the name of the bucket where it should deploy your website to, and that's it. Then it already functions. Now, there are a lot of other configurations options as well. You can specify index and error documents. You can specify the cache max age. You can enable gzip. You can do a variety of stuff straight here in the config file. So now that we have the tool installed, let's go to the AWS management console and actually make a bucket that you can upload your website to. So I'm gonna to go to the S3 management console and I'm gonna create a new bucket specifically for my website. I'm going to call it www.myawesomewebsite.com which doesn't exist, but anyway. I'm going to host it in Ireland since that's the region closest to me. And I'm going to just hit create. And there we go, my bucket has now been created. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create an identity which has access to this bucket and this bucket only. And then we can give those credentials to S3 website. So I'm going to go here to services and I'm going to go over to IAM, which is identity and access management, and I'm going to create a new user. So I'm going to navigate here to users. I'm going to click create new user and I'm going to call my user S3 website deploy, for example, and make sure that this is checked off. It's generate an access key for each user. We obviously want an access key. Now I'm going to click create. And here are my user security credentials that I can use for S3 website. I'm just gonna copy this one here. I'm gonna go back to the S3 website configuration file and I'm gonna paste it in here. This is my ID and this is my secret. Copy, paste. And my bucket that I created is www.myawesomewebsite.com. There we go, I'm gonna save it and I'm going to go back to the management console. Here I'm going to click close. Yes, I did save the credentials. And there we go. Now there's one thing that we still have to do. We've created a user, we've created a bucket, but this user doesn't have any rights to that particular bucket. So now we're going to give the user some rights so that it can actually access the bucket and upload our website. And so to do this, I'm going to click on this user to open up its details. I'm going to hit the permissions tab and I'm gonna create a new inline policy using the policy generator. So here I'm gonna click policy generator, I'm gonna click select, and here I can tell it what's, what actions I wanna allow on which services. So I'm gonna say that this user is allowed 
to access the S3 service. I'm going to allow it to use all the actions that S3 has and I'm going to allow it on my specific bucket. So this is the ARN for my bucket. It's a specific syntax to refer to resources on Amazon. Uh, and it starts with ARN, double point, AWS, double point, S3, then three double points, and then the name of my bucket, which is www.myawesomewebsite.com. So now I'm going to add this statement, and I'm going to go to the next step. And this is the generated policy, and obviously this is fine for me, so I'm going to click Apply Policy. And there we go. The user now has full access to our created bucket. So let's now go back to S3 website and actually initialize this bucket. As you remember of one of my previous videos, if you want to host a static website on S3, you have to enable static website hosting and you have to set an index document and error document. Well, S3 website can do this for us. And so to do this, you type S3 website and you say config and you say apply. And now it's going to apply the configuration to your bucket. So it's going to say the bucket is now function is now functioning as a website. The bucket is readable to the whole world. There are no redirects configured in our config file, so that's fine. And then it asks me, do you want to deliver your website via CloudFront, the CDN of Amazon? If I say yes, it will automatically create a new CloudFront distribution for me, link that up. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to say no, I don't want to do this. And then we're done. And now there are just a few things left to do in the config file. The first thing that we have to edit is the site option. We need to uncomment this and we need to tell S3 website where our website is located. And since our website is located in the same place as the config file, I'm just going to type dot to specify that it's the current directory. And then we have to configure the S3 endpoint. Now because I chose Ireland as my bucket location, I have to fill in EU West-1. Now this depends again on the location of your bucket and you can use this URL to find out which endpoint you have to use. So I'm going to save the config file and now we're ready to push our website live. Okay, so I'm back at the terminal and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask S3 website to deploy my website. So I'm going to say S3 website push and this is going to start uploading all my files to S3 and make sure that they're public. And there we go, S3 website is finished, my website is live, and it even notes successfully pushed the website to, and then the URL of my website. So let me copy that, and let's see if our website is live. So here I am at Safari, I'm going to paste in the URL that S3 website gave me, I'm going to hit enter, and there we go, this is my awesome website, my website is live for everyone to see. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and I hope to see you in the next one.